the acceptance of speaking about extraterrestrials in the media and it becoming so talked about, I think it's time. A lot of people that would go through this situation would just write it off. Just wanted to say I've been waiting to do this video for so long. I truly believe that now is the time. What we're going to be discussing today is an event that happened to me a very long time ago, and I think I'm ready to talk about it. I believe I was abducted by aliens. Hear me out here. I'm well aware that a lot of people are going to think I'm crazy. It's a topic that people generally either accept right away or they don't. I'm going to tell you my story along with a few other friends and eyewitnesses and you know take it for what it is. There's a reason why you're here if you're watching this video. You are a star seed or a light worker or just a magical being that was brought here to watch this, to witness this you can relate and yourself have had an experience like this please leave it in the comments let's talk about it so today is my first day researching this topic on my own and I want to go over the history of Rome New York notable location the Fort Stanwix National Monument reconstructed 18th century fort that was the site of significant military activity during the American Revolution. Some visitors and staff members have reported strange noises, apparitions, and feelings of being watched. Another location is the Rome Capitol Theater, a historic theater known for its elegant architecture and rich history. Some people claim to have witnessed unusual occurrences, unexplained sounds and lights flickering on and off. They attribute to paranormal activity. Upstate New York, like any other region, has its share of reports and stories about extraterrestrial encounters and UFO sightings. I'm going to be going over some notable spiritual and extraterrestrial activity with you now, starting out with Pine Bush, a small town in upstate New York. It's gained its reputation as a hot spot for UFO activity and sightings. This area has had reports of strange activity and sightings in the sky. While researching, I totally found a website that is all about paranormal activity and UFOs. They actually have a parade and a convention. Pretty cool. Next is Hudson Valley Sightings in upstate New York. The Hudson Valley region has been the site of many reported UFO sightings since the 1980s. Sightings often describe large, triangular shaped objects with bright lights that move silently across the sky. The Hudson Valley sightings have been the subject of much speculation and investigation over the years. There is a documentary right now on HBO on Hudson Valley. It's all about the community, how they're being terrorized and abducted. Hudson Valley is the number one hotspot for UFO activity reported in the U.S. today. We are only two hours from Hudson Valley. Next is contact in the Catskills. The Catskill Mountains in upstate New York have also been associated with reports of UFO sightings and also encounters claim to have direct contact with extraterrestrials. So who knows what's going on up in the Catskill Mountains? Like any other area, upstate New York is not special. Historical accounts of UFO sightings dating back to the 19th century. These sightings often describe strange aerial phenomena that are unexplained at the time of it happening. It kind of reminds me of the time that, I believe it was the first time ever I had ever seen any kind of UFO or any kind of lights in the sky. I was in 
Lee Center, New York. My friend and I were heading home. We usually took the same road every single time, no different than any other night. My best friend was like, you know what? We're gonna take the long way home. Why not? Let's shake it up a bit. Let's do a pattern interruption, right? And as we got out of her car to go inside of her house, we saw a strip of light in the sky and into one, one bright light and then it just shot away. Less about what we were viewing and more about the feeling in which we were experiencing when we viewed this object in the sky. She worked for the Air Force Base at the time in Rome, New York. She had access to a website that will let you know what is going on in the sky above you in real time. So she was able to go straight inside, jump online, and look at the radar system and find out if there were any airplanes, helicopters, or etc. at the time that we saw this weird flying thing. Upstate New York has a number of UFO and extraterrestrial groups that get together and discuss these very things that I'm talking about. I look forward to speaking to some of them about what happened to me and what's happened to other people to raise awareness. These groups often hold meetings and conferences, discuss their findings, and share information. Kind of what I'm doing here, like I have been making videos for a while now and I just really want to utilize my time and my effort and my energy towards something that is going to matter or make a difference, even in a small way, just by speaking about it and raising awareness could help somebody out there going through these experiences. Next topic is very, very, very valid and important is the Dead Files visit. The Dead Files is a show on the Travel Channel. Right now you can actually find it on HBO Max. I believe they have every single episode on there. Broadcast new episodes today. They've actually been to Rome, New York in an episode called Innocent Blood and it's season three, episode 13 or 12. I've been watching that show for a very, very long time. Hired homicide detective Steve, a psychic medium, Amy Allen, investigate haunted locations separately and then compare their findings thereafter. During their investigations, Amy will conduct a walkthrough of the location, communicate with any spirits, pick up on any information, Steve, on the other hand, will come at a different time and he will go over all of the facts of the location. So, 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 so important. He also tries to debunk all the findings, which I really appreciate. This is due to his research analysis history along with him being a personal skeptic. There's one person on the spiritual side and then there's one person on the skeptic side trying to meet in the middle and make this story complete and make it make sense in a way that it works for everybody. I really love that part about The Dead Files. In the episode of The Dead Files in Rome, New York, Innocent Blood, Amy picks up on extraterrestrial beings that does not look that are very, very interested in that area because they don't want the human race there. It's not meant for the living. It's meant for the dead. It's interesting because out of all of the episodes of The Dead Files that I've watched over the years and all of the episodes that Amy Allen has been in, she has never ever encountered any kind of ETs, aliens, none of that. It's always been spiritual based, supernatural, it's always been ghosts. I find it fascinating that this is the one episode that has to do with aliens and she even says that. Some type of alien, a potential situation that I personally have never encountered before. I'm not sure what these things are, but it's possible that they're from another world or another dimension. They're from another world or another dimension. I'm not from there, but I lived there at the time. I thought it was really cool because I always picked up on activity in this area, but I never really had any proof or any reason to believe these things. It was always just a feeling. And I did experience a lot of paranormal stuff, but now I'm starting to question a lot of it. Were all of these paranormal, spiritual, ghostly, occurrences did they have to do with spiritual activity or were they always extraterrestrial 
haven't seen The Dead Files, you haven't seen that episode, I highly, highly, highly suggest watching it. There have been some reports and stories linking to UFO sightings, alleged alien abduction, bodies of water. I really wanted to connect the dots when it came to location I was at, the elements that I was around that were around me, time of my loss of consciousness. UFO sightings and alleged alien abductions have a connection with bodies of water, lakes, rivers, oceans, etc. Some UFO researchers and enthusiasts speculate that aliens have interest in water due to its importance for life on Earth. It's total suns, and I'm a water sign. So now I just really want to quickly go over what happened to me and the experience that I had in Rome, New York. And for the longest time, I've repeated this story so many times and nothing has changed. It's always stayed the same. Recollect it like it was just yesterday. Even though it happened so long ago, I still remember little details that are so important. And I've told this story so many times to so many people that I trust and love. And I never really wanted to talk about it because I was so scared someone was going to think I was crazy or something negative would come out of it. But I do feel like with the raising of consciousness and the acceptance of speaking about extraterrestrials in the media and it becoming so talked about, I think it's time. A lot of people that would go through this situation would just write it off. They would pretend like it didn't even happen. They would be so embarrassed, they would never talk about it. Actually, in history, with extraterrestrials or abduction stories, that is a common, common current. The people who experience the incident are unwilling to speak about it, scared to open up about it. They don't want to talk about it. I was 22 years old in June 2011. It was a warm summer night. I was sitting outside under the moon with three friends. Two friends and my brother specifically. It felt like an ordinary night. We stayed up all night just making memories. That's what we did when we were younger. This was my father's home at the time, and he lived right next to Griffiths Air Force Base, which has been said to be an alien hotspot. This area in its entirety has a lot to do with some of this story, but we'll talk about that topic later. Changing about 4 a.m. when we realized the sun would be up soon along with my dad who would be very mad if he knew we were making noise and being annoying outside for the neighbors to hear. We quickly made new plans to take a walk to my friend's grandparents house down the road. He said he had some pot and wanted to continue hanging out. Everybody in the group kind of agreed and followed him. We were being about six blocks down the road over a wide bridge past countless small average townhouses and neighborhoods. Still dark on our trip, but you could tell that the sunrise was approaching very soon. As soon as we got to his house, we decided to hide out in his backyard underneath a huge willow tree. But we sat, the four of us, quietly giggling, talking nonsense for a few minutes. Before I realized it, I got the sense out of nowhere that I was almost telepathic. It's as if I could read all of our minds all at once. Felt a heavy weight around us negative looming i remember laying back under the tree and staring at the tree and its beauty i actually snapped a photo and feeling so peaceful like i could just let go forever That is the last thing I remember sitting underneath the willow tree. The next thing I remember is walking alongside the river bend, the opposite side of my friend's grandparents' house. The friend whose grandparents' house it was was gone, and I was left with my brother and his friend. They were quickly walking ahead of me, talking about something I couldn't make out what they were saying at the time. 
but I was just very, very confused. How did I get here? What happened? Where are we? Why did I feel like a little kid being drugged by my parents? It was back to being telepathic again. I could understand what they were thinking and feeling and the insecurities and just a looming negativity as if it was something that I needed to dissect or understand. Quickly just wanted to get out of the situation because I was so confused and it wasn't anything I could explain at the time. I tried to walk the opposite direction to go home. My brother and his friend were adamant on me staying with them because they could tell something was off. While under the willow tree, they explained to me a couple days later that our friend's grandfather came out of the house in the middle of the morning at a time that he would never be typically awake and told us to leave and took our friend inside. As my brother and his friend were leaving the backyard, they realized I was nowhere. They turned around and I was just still sitting underneath the tree, like a statue. I wasn't moving. It's as if I wasn't there. I had no consciousness. They almost had to physically drag me to get up. Once I got up and started walking, they swiftly got a move on to get away from my friend's grandfather. Where was I? Where was my consciousness? It had left. As we were walking down the sidewalk heading towards Floyd Ave in Rome, I started to have visions. I would flash into another realm where I was on a beach. I could feel the sun on my back and the sand in my feet. Every time I would go into this other realm, I would start running. I didn't know what else to do because I wanted to run away. I didn't understand what was happening to me. I'm looking around in this other realm. I can see my brother. He has his arms crossed and he's shaking his head at me. You have to go faster, he said. I have to go faster, what are you talking about? Where am I, what is happening? You have to go faster. We were walking down Floyd Ave, back to my dad's house where I really didn't wanna go. I didn't even know why I didn't wanna go there. I just knew I didn't wanna go that direction. Maybe four blocks down Floyd Ave, we hit the river bend across the bridge, and I knew I didn't want to go there. And she looks up and she sees it. It's a UFO. She's not listening to me at all. She runs out in the road. Look, look. The entire night. And it finally came over. And it was a small plane. And it had like an LED thing across the wings. Boom. Space chopper. This is actually where it started. This is actually where it started. The sky is so beautiful. Today. Probably through there, if I had to imagine. Do you remember climbing this tree? from this point until and went down all the way down this road. I could tell that there's something up with you. I lost consciousness when I laid down under the tree and I snapped a photo. 
when I went to go sit back up, I don't remember anything after that. doing right now is just like matching your stuff up with mine and seeing where like you're adding in new pieces of information and where our stories line uh, up. Yeah, I got you. You know, first question. It's Taylor White. Um, I'm Sonic's brother. Yeah, this is my brother. And it's like, it's still doing it's it. Come here, quick, 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 quick. Look at the time. What the fuck? That is so weird. So is it recording? It looks like it's recording, but the time is... That is bizarre. That's saying something. Got a little bit of anxiety now. You recall the date of the night in the morning of the event that we're about to be talking about. 2011. 2011. June. You were right. June. June. Cool. Okay, can you recall the city and the location that we were in? It was here in Rome, New York. One, three, four, four, zero. <laughs> what were you doing? And how was the mood during like the night time when we were sitting around at dad's? The beginning of the night was fine. We were just hanging out. We I don't wanted, either. We wanted to smoke. Patrick insisted that we leave, I think. To That's his, what I remember. And who, who, where did you go? Like whose house? Our friends, grandparents' place. Uh, do you remember to, who all left together? It was me, you, Kate, and Patrick. I didn't remember anything too terrible happening besides it sucked walking all that way because it is kind of like a trek mm -hmm. um, from our from where we were at to where we were going. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just kind of surprised we even left because at that point I was kind of like tired anyway. About what time do you feel it was then? Maybe, maybe 12, 1 o'clock. Okay. But I could be wrong was about that. Was the sun up? No. We, it was dark, nighttime. Walked back, it was daytime. Four hours, mm -hmm. I would say, maybe. But a time passed. When we got to his grandparent, his grandparents' house, where did we go? What did we do? We we sat down under a tree, and we, we smoked some weed. I was still a teenager at the time. Sonnet was younger. Uh, you know what I mean? We were doing stuff like that. You were saying that was different from the mood that was going on at your dad's house. Did it feel like a shift in the mood? Did it feel about the same? It was it was peaceful, kind of. It was like a it was like kind of like a mystical feeling. You know? At some point, you kind of like drifted off from the conversation. And it just was I don't even remember you saying much. You seemed like you were like kind of like dazed or like not really in your right element. How long were you under the tree? I'd say we weren't there that long. That, I, that didn't feel like we were there that long before Gra you Patrick's remember? grandpa came out and kicked us out. Okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> he came out and said, you guys got to get out of here. He was mad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. just pick quickly. He got up and went inside with his grandpa. Um, yeah, he was like, yeah, sorry, guys. You do once you left friend's house. I started walking back home because um, it was late and it was like, or it wasn't late anymore. It was like early morning by that time. I feel like you were in another world. Yeah, and I, I, I changed from uh, some. You were definitely changed. Remember that, like leaving Patrick's and then turning around and being like, "She's still sitting there," and you had to go back and get me. That would Dude, be something I, that stood was out. Was that me or was that you that did that? I did that. That's you what Kate that. said. Okay. Why well, you feel like you did it too? I think we both were abducted, no, Taylor. Honestly. No. I think we both lost time. Definitely like a weird loss of time that night what for was, sure. Okay. One being completely sober to ten being blacked out drunk. Where did you fall? It's like it was early morning by the time all this stuff was happening, so and the whole experience really kinda like killed my buzz, so to speak. Yeah. I was like um, just trying to get home at that point, I felt like. Okay, so now you're walking down the road away from 
the grandparents' house heading to your dad's house? At some point, it was just like you were unresponsive to what I was trying to say to you or trying to guide you to. And, and it was like you wanted to go a different way. And um, I was worried about you because it seemed like you weren't yourself quite. So I was like, I want, I'm going to stay with her because I just want to make sure she's going to get, I didn't care where you went. If right. you went to mom's or you went to dad's, I was just like, all right, just let's go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going to come with you. We're going to get through this and we're going to get home. Yeah. And that's all I was, that's all I was um, concerned about at that time. Right. And, but she was in a different place. But I felt like a couple of times, even I went in and out. So maybe there were times where I don't really quite remember, you know. You've never said that before. That's yeah. news to so, me. So, you know, now I do think there was a loss of time there, a weird kind of time where we where we did understand each other, but we couldn't quite communicate it. Well, Thoughts or like, you know what I mean? There was some, definitely Being some able to, like ESP type shit. Could hear thoughts. I know that for yeah. certain. That was part of my experience. That was the scariest and sketchiest was being able to hear what you guys were thinking. How long do you think that time period was? Just off the top of your head. It yeah. had to have been more than two hours. Walk from Patrick's It was just the dad's. running back and forth and chasing, you know, because wow. he got into like a part of the journey where it was like you were wanting to run back, did not want to go back to a certain area or place. I, I was just trying to be there for you. It seemed like you weren't yourself and I was worried that maybe something might happen. Doing my best to talk to her the best way I, I knew I could. And, um, you know, I think she was seeing things in, through different eyes at that time. You know what I mean? That's just how I <laughs> You sound like and dad, like, trying to, like, explain <laughs> his drunk friend's <laughs> behavior at the bar. You're like, like, you could feel it in the air type shit. <laughs> if you could sum up this event or this night and morning all into one in a few words, what would they be? Would you call it an experience? It was like a time warp or something. Being in multiple different places at the same time type shit. Would you have kept that in your memory if we weren't doing this now? Or is it something that would have just faded away? I think about it from time like to time. Like if in that night specifically, would they have gotten away with taking over that night if I wasn't bringing it up right now? Like, would you go, I don't really remember that that just glitched out in the matrix and gone on well gone down floyd Ave like a normal old night in you live in a, in a strange area like i feel like this place is um there's a vortex yeah or something leave an et's yes i do yeah okay have you ever seen a ufo i feel like they're more like interdimensional beings than they are physical but i do think that there are actual physical entities as well so to, thinking back to like 2011, do you think you had more ET-like sightings and experiences in the sky after that had happened that that day or before? Or after equal? that experience, I had more Height. experiences right. where I've seen like... I've seen some weird stuff in the sky. I've never, I don't really tell people about it because I don't want to be like, oh, you're crazy or whatever. I've pointed it out a few times to a few friends. I've seen weird stuff and like, what is that? You know, and uh, they would just get weirded out because it is, it's scary. It's a scary thing. You know, people are uh, kind of programmed to fear uh, what they don't know, and especially with the alien thing, humans versus aliens war type uh, propaganda that they put out. No, not all of them are totally bad. Not so all humans at, are bad. Either. At least some of them are on our side. The reptilians will put them, uh, capture them and put them in these tubes. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was watching Gaia Network or something. Did it change your perspective on life or the universe in any way? It shows me that there's like a better future for myself and that I should aim for like something better or something higher. Aww. And like knowing like things are going to work out eventually in my life. Not that things are even bad now want to be a part of life and I want to be a part of the winning team so it kind of sounds like I kind of just sacrificed myself looking crazy just to get a message to you right a message that could have potentially seemed small right. but could have shifted your whole reality I had dreams okay. where I've interacted with ET or some kind of higher intelligence dreams yeah they were purple and they had very rough skin 
Bumps. And they had, like, bumps on their body, but they were... Yeah. I don't remember. Humanoid, her, like, but, like, right, bumpy. Yeah. Right, It was... I shook their hand. It's the Arcturians. How would you respond to, like, skeptics who doubt the reality of your experience? I would say, you know... The universe is so vast and big, and my belief is, personally, I feel like all the aliens come from Earth who are always looking at the lack of things, saying that we don't have enough, but the Earth is, like, not going anywhere. Be a part of the solution rather than being part of the problem. Do life the best you can and be what you were created to do. You know what I mean? It's in your DNA. Answered everything. Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And I just want to say thank you for stopping by.